So last time we learned about body plots and uh, I added one more slide for you here and what I mentioned about the phase and the slope of the magnitude plot as omega goes to infinity is related to the order of polynomials and numerator and denominator of a transfer function. I wrote it for you on the slides, but here I added it to the slides. And also I mentioned that you always make the constant coefficient in numerator or denominator of a transfer function to one for the uh, body plot formulas. And I also formalized that and mentioned it here. Also, I added this G1 to G5 for you last time for the practice problem we did. And I said that when you have a higher order system, which is none of the basic ones that we studied, you write it as product of as many of those basics as needed. And here I formally mentioned that here, which one is which for this example. And then you plot them individually and then you simply add them together, which means basically at any point, if I have the value of, let's say here in the phase, at any omega, let's say at omega equal 1, uh, if I can plot at omega equal 1, if I have the value of phase for G1, for, for G3, G1, for G4, for G5, and for G2, if I add all of these numbers together, then it will be the value of the total function over there and the similar thing for magnitude plots. So I mentioned all of that for you and I added these notes and this slide. Now we have to look at some new topics. One of them is minimum phase versus non-minimum phase. In the past, I just mentioned that if a system, a transfer function has all poles and zeros on the left hand side of the imaginary axis we call it minimum phase while if even one of these poles or zeros is on the right hand side of the imaginary axis we call it non-minimum phase why is that it can be at least demonstrated and the answer is yes so here i'm going to show you two transfer functions both have a, a first order factor in numerator and denominator so M and N are both equal to one for both systems. G1 has both pole and zero on the left side. G2 has the zero on the right side. And we wanna draw their body plot and look at their body plot and see uh, the difference between them, right? So for both of the systems, if you look, uh, let me show it here for you that uh, if I write G1 of S as um, 1 plus 2s, or I can write it as 2s plus 1, doesn't matter, divided by 3s plus 1, the 0 is at negative half, and the pole is at negative one third. For g2 of s, which is negative 2s plus 1 divided by 3s plus 1, the pole is in the same location, but the zero is at positive 0.5. And for both systems, M is equal to one and N is equal to one. So we learned that the phase as omega goes to infinity, the phase of a system should go to what? Should go to N minus M times negative 90 degrees. And so since N and M are the same, so it should go to what? To zero for G1, and it does, we'll see. But the question is, is is the phase of G2 also, where has M and N both equal to one? Does this one also go to zero degrees? That's the question. Is this going to happen? And here, if we do that, and I've done it here for you in MATLAB, so I have defined both systems, a minimum phase system and a non-minimum phase system. Let me 
do it again here so that you can see everything. So here I say my minimum phase system is a transfer function of 2131. So that's this one, right? And then I say a system of non-minimum phase is negative to end one, like that. And then I say, well, draw me the body of the system minimum phase, correct? Which is this guy. Mm, here, let me redo it. So, that's this plot. Clearly, you can see that the phase is going back to zero. And everything looks fine. Clearly, as you can see, this is a low-pass filter. And then I say, well, hold on. You can actually do that with the body command, too. Say, now, do the non-minimum phase for me, too, on the top of the previous one. Now, if you look, it's quite interesting that the magnitude of both of them is on the top of each other. Okay, so they have the same magnitude plot, both low-pass filters. But look at here, if I use legend on this one, the blue one is the minimum phase, the one that goes back to zero. But look at the non-minimum one. It starts at 360, or zero, in other words, and goes to what? 180. So look, the phase of this system is much better than that, although their magnitudes are the same. So we can say the blue system has minimal phase compared to the red system, okay? And that's why we call the red system with any pole or zero on the right-hand side a non-minimum phase, okay? And I have added this plot for you in the lecture. And you can see that the difference between them. The other thing that you need to know is transport lag. So in the past, we learned that uh, if a system has a delay or dead time or transport lag, then what would you expect? For example, if I have a, uh, let me make this right because that's a subscript. So if you have a unit step function with t seconds of delay, cap t, what is the transfer function of that? So it is going to be 1, which is the transfer of u of s of t times an exponential of negative ts, right? So this is the transfer function of a unit stay that starts with t seconds of delay. And if I plug for s equal j omega, I want to get the body plot, a phase of this, what happens? It's going to be e to the negative jt omega. Now the question is, what is the phase of this guy? And what is the magnitude of that? Clearly, you know the magnitude of this from what you learned. If I use the Euler formula for e to the negative jt omega, it's going to be cosine omega t minus j sine omega t. And clearly this... Uh, complex number has a magnitude of cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. But the phase of that is uh, basically arc tangent of sine omega t divided by cosine omega t with a negative sign. Negative comes out of the arc tangent. And then sine omega t over cosine omega t is tangent omega t and when you take arc tangent of tangent they cancel each other so you are left with omega t only so the phase of this is negative omega t which is quite interesting what does that tell you that tells you that the phase of this uh, transfer function does not converge to a fixed number it keeps increasing, or basically you can say decreasing if you're looking at a negative sign. It constantly kept decreasing, but it hasn't been the case for any other system. If you look at any other system we had in the past, we always have this formula that says the phase of a system, which does not have transport lag, 
will always converge to what as omega gets bigger and bigger? Will always converge to n minus m times negative 90 degrees if it is minimum phase. Even if it's not minimum phase, like the system here, still it converges to some number. That is what, as you can see, that is limited. It does not grow unbounded. But now, if you look, for a system with a transport lag, what happens? Its phase keeps increasing. It never converges to a fixed number. As omega gets bigger and bigger, this phase is getting a bigger negative number, right? So if you ever see, again, if you ever draw the body plots of any system or you have a graph given to you, really, so you don't have uh, something that you calculated yourself, because if you do, then you know the system does have a transport lag or not. But if I give you an experimental body plot where uh, this is the phase of the system and that is omega, and you see that instead of the phase ultimately converging to some number, right? Whether positive or negative. So when you start at any angle, it doesn't matter the start point. What we are concerned is the end point. So if you see it does not converge to a horizontal asymptote, okay? But instead, it just keeps what? Decreasing as omega gets bigger and bigger then this one has a transport lag, or it has a dead time, or it has a delay. Okay, so that's a signature of systems with delay. In their phase of body plot, you see they never converge, they just keep increasing, or decreasing, you can call it. So that's an important thing that I wanted you to know. Now, the final thing that uh, you need to learn from a body plot, so, so far you can see that I can uh, say if a system has what? Uh, delay in it, if it's not, by looking at the final value uh, that its uh, body plot phase is converging to, I can say at least the difference between n and m, correct? So I can say how many orders denominator is bigger than numerator. I can tell that by looking at the final number. These are converging. I can say if it's not minimum phase, I can say if it has lag. And now, what about uh, the uh, steady state behavior of the system? Or in other words, what about the type of the system? Remember, in the past, we had something called type, not order, type. And what was type? If you remember, type was, if you look at the open loop fit forward transfer function, or in a unity feedback system, just fit forward transfer function, G, then if G has a numerator, which is here, a constant gain times a bunch of linear factors divided by Another bunch of linear factors multiplied, and then what? N roots at S equals zero, then we call this N what? We call it the type of the system, right? If N is zero, we say G is system type zero. If it's one, if it's two, call it type one and type two. And we learned that this type is really important in allowing the system to follow specific inputs, right? For example, we learned that if the R of S input is a unit step function, then if the system is type 0, it can follow the step function, but it will show a limited finite steady state error, which was 1 over 1 plus Kp, where Kp was the static position constant. Or... Uh, if it's the system is type 1 or 2, then they have zero steady state error in response to a unit step. And similarly, we showed it for other inputs like unit ramp and unit acceleration that as the type of the system gets bigger and bigger, it can easily follow uh, 
more and more inputs, the inputs that are changing with respect to time faster and faster without any steady state error. So we'll learn about type. Now, we want to know if this type of the system shows itself in a body plot. So if I give you a body plot experimentally, just by looking at the body plot, can you tell me whether the system is type 1, type 0, type 2, or what? Or how many poles it has at s equals 0? And the answer is yes. So we can easily show that if the system is type 0, in other words, never has any s at 0, any pole at 0, s equals 0. So it's only a bunch of linear terms in numerator times again, divided by a bunch of linear terms in the denominator multiplied together. Then, for that type 0 system, if you plot it, as now this time omega goes to zero. So in the past we looked what happens when omega goes to infinity. Now we're going to look at the left side of the graph. What happens when omega goes to zero here? Okay, look at this side now. For a type zero system, the left side of the graph is always horizontal. It has zero slope. Okay. If that's the case, that's a type 0 system. And not only that, the location where it hits the vertical axis, if I call the value of that delta, delta decibels, 10 decibels, 20 decibels, 15 decibels, whatever. If I have that delta in decibels, then from that delta, I can find what? The static position error constant of the system, Kp. Kp can easily be shown to be 10 to the delta over 20. And what's good about Kp? If you remember, the steady state error in response to a unit step function was 1 over 1 plus Kp. So once I have that, then I can determine what? I can determine that this system in response to a unit step, how much of a steady state error would it show okay so this is for a type zero system flat left side that is uh very important and uh now if the system on the other hand as you look at the left side it does not show a flat area but it shows a line with inclination with angle and the slope of that line is negative 20 decibels per decade that means a system is what? Type 1. Okay, and the proof is shown here. I can easily show you that, but uh, let me first go through it, and then I can explain more. But if you see a negative 20 decibel per decade slope on the left-hand side of the graph, that means the system is type 1. And remember, a system type 1 can follow the unit ramp function with the steady state error of how much? 1 over kv, where kv was the static velocity cons error constant, right? Now the question is, I know this is a system type 1. Can I find kv from this graph? And the answer is yes. If you continue this line, this initial line of negative 20 decibels per decade, if you continue that, and then from omega equal 1, you draw a vertical line, okay? So you draw a vertical line and continue the initial line. Wherever they intersect each other, that value, okay, is 20 log kV. So you can find it that way if you have this value projected here. Or the alternative way is... If you continue that line all the way until it hits the horizontal axis of omega equal of decibel of zero, then also that intersection point can also be shown to be the same as what? K, V, and this is not really hard. It just comes from the equation of that line. So using either method, I can find the value of KV, and then using KV, I can find the steady state error in response to a unit ramp function for a type 1 system. Not only that, but again, 
uh, we can show that better than that we can also determine one more thing and that is the damping ratio for this system for this system the damping ratio can be calculated by omega 2 over 2 omega 3 where omega 2 and omega 3 are what omega 2 is the location of the first breakpoint the first corner frequency right that's where the first line is separated from the second line or the second portion of the magnitude graph that's omega 2 and omega 3 is where the actual graph would hit the horizontal axis okay so if you have those two locations then there is proof behind it i can show you that omega 2 over 2 omega 3 is the damping ratio of the system as well so yes from body plot i can find more information about both transient response right so this is this can be used to estimate the transient response of the system, correct? All of those overshoots, rise time, settling time, and so they depend on zeta. And then using this, I can look at what? The steady state response of the system. So we can extract a bunch of useful information from a body graph about the type, about the order, about uh, steady state error, transient response, so on and so forth, right? And finally, if the system is type 2, then at the beginning, on the left side, the slope is what? Again, it's aligned with the slope, and that slope is negative 40 decibels per decade. Negative 40 means system is type 2. And for this system, in response to, in response to, I'm sorry, in response to a unit acceleration function, the steady state error was, if you remember, it was 1 over Ka, where Ka was called a static acceleration error constant. Now the question is, can I find Ka from this graph? And the answer is yes. Again, similar to the previous case, if you continue the initial line all the way until it hits what the uh, horizontal axis then that value is the square root of ka okay so you can say ka is what if i know the value of that intersection point omega a i can say ka is omega a squared okay and then i can find of course uh steady state error in response to unit acceleration input okay so these are some important things that you can get from a graph by the way again you probably have learned a pattern right that if system type if system is type n in general then slope of the magnitude curve as omega approaches zero is what? n times negative 20 decibel per decade, right? So system type 0 has 0 slope, system type 1 is negative to any system type 2 is negative 40. If system is type 4, it's going to be negative 80. Okay, so that's a general rule. Another general rule which would tell me the type of the system from the left side of a body graph. So that is important. I will add that to this slide as a writing, but just want to make sure your notes are in good shape. So now the body plot is over and you know a bunch of things about body plots, but uh, as I mentioned, I want to keep this lecture a little shorter because last time I went a little above the 50 minute time, but I know some of you say, well, can you solve a problem and show us how to use all of this info in a problem? And I say, yes, why not? So uh, let's try to do something. So uh, let's see. 
So I'll try to show you. This is my digital book that the publisher gave me. And I shared with you all of the chapters that you need. Let's see. This is frequency response. Let's look at one of the problems. Maybe we can look at something together if there is a good problem in here with the body plot in it. Okay. That doesn't look bad, this one. Let's look at this. So just let's look at this type of system. So what do you think? Let's see what we can extract from uh, this graph here. And uh, let me bring it to uh, OneNote so that I can write on it. So I'll bring it here. There we go, and then I'll try to make this bigger if it allows. Hopefully it does. No. Oh, there we go. Okay. That's not bad. So now, what? Let's see. What can I extract from such body plot? Let's say I got this experimentally. Remember, I told you you can always consider the system to be a black box, send a bunch of frequency in with some known magnitude and phase, and then measure the magnitude of phase of the output, compare, and then find the magnitude and the phase plot of the phase plot of the transfer function. And you can get this body plot experimentally. You don't really need to know the mathematical model of the system to get this. Now, if I look at this and I know that this belongs to a black box called G of S, which I have no idea about. I don't know. It's probably a polynomial over another polynomial, but do I know anything about this? If I call this G of S to be a polynomial of order M, divided by a polynomial of order n, right? So this is s to the m plus a bunch of things plus uh, a m, and this is s to the n plus a bunch of things plus b n. What is m, what is n? Can I guess, or at least the difference between them? And the areas of the graph that you should look is first on the right hand side as omega is getting bigger and bigger. Look at this. What value is the phase converging to? Negative 270. So the phase should always converge to what? N minus M times negative 90 when omega gets bigger and bigger. So what does it tell us? It tells us that N minus M is what? 3. So the system has a denominator that is in order, is three times in order higher than numerator. For example, if numerator is a constant, then denominator is a cubic polynomial. Or if its numerator is linear, then um, uh, denominator is fourth order, right? So that's one thing that we can learn. By the way, what do you guess this slope is now that you know n minus m? Can you guess this slope? Yes, we probably can, right? Remember, the slope should be what? When omega gets bigger and bigger. Yes, n minus m times negative 20. And so, since that's 3, it should be negative 60 decibels per decade. So, without even measuring it from this graph, I can find this slope. But now, as a practice, let's really calculate this slope of this line from this graph and see if it's 60. So what we need is, over one decade, it should drop 60 decibels. So let's see. So we look, for example, here, where it is 60, right? Negative 60. And then we look at it where it is 0, right? This is a 60 decibel drop from 0 to negative 60, right? But what's the difference between these two frequencies? So if I 
draw a line here and draw a line here. What is it? Do you see a decade? From one frequency to 10 times bigger than that? Yes, I see. It's probably somewhere between like 20, 2.2, 2.3 to 22, 23, right? So this guy is one decade, correct? And this guy is negative 60 decibel drop. So yes, the slope of this line is that. Or if you want, you can use other points. Maybe 2 is not really high omega. So use bigger omegas. If you don't like it, use a bigger omega. Maybe go from 10 to 100. So if you look at 10 and 100, what is the difference between these two numbers? So that's exactly a decade. And what is it? That's negative 40, 60, 100, and negative 80. And that was what? A negative 100. And what is this again? Negative 60 decibel, right? So you see clearly the slope of this line is negative 60. Good. So that's one of the pieces of info that I could get. Now what? A bunch of control Z's. Okay, now I don't know. Oh, good. So, uh, what can the beginning of the graph tell me? So, when omega is small on this side, what does that tell me? Do you see a line of flat, no slope? No. I see a line that has some slope. How much is it roughly? So if I go from uh, point 0.1 to 1, if I could continue this guy all the way to 1, roughly, so I extend this kind of to 1, right, hypothetically, then how much is the slope? In one decade, how much did it drop? Yes, 40 decibel in one decade from 0.1 to 1, right? A decade. So uh, the slope of this line is really what? Negative 40 decibel per decade. And what does that mean when it's negative 40? This is equal to n times negative 20. So what does it mean? I mean n is 2. This is a type 2 system. And what does type 2 mean? I mean, whatever the denominator is, if you factor it out, it has some s squared on it multiplied by a bunch of terms. Okay? I don't know how many of them because I don't know. The, I just know the difference between numerator and denominator. But it definitely has what? s squared in it. It has two poles at zero, right? Good. And it can also give me another thing. What was that, if you remember? It was kV, right? So what was kV? So kV was where this, uh, or kA, I'm sorry, kA. So it whenever it hits the uh, horizontal axis, that omega squared is Ka. And what is it for this case here? So you see roughly where it hits the ground is equal to omega of 1. So this number 1 is omega A. And so what does it mean about Ka? Yes, that means your Ka is almost 1, 2. So what does it mean about the steady state error of the system in response to unit acceleration input? Yes, that is also one unit. Again, this is in response to what input? U of t equal unit acceleration t squared, right? So if this is u and this is y, then in response to that, you have that much of a steady state error. But since this thing is type 2, it can easily follow a unit ramp and a unit what? Step. So if u of uh, t is a step function, or 
it is a what? A RAM function, units RAM. If any of these is input, what do you expect the, uh, the steady state error to be? Yes, zero, because the system type 2 has no problem following any of those. Okay. So you can clearly see that we can extract a wealth of information from a body plot that we could have acquired experimentally. So we stop the lecture on body plots here and I will see you in the next lecture for Nyquist plots. Thank you.